remained in the dark, crying and lamenting. At last, he clasped his hands in prayer and, in so doing, rubbed the ring, which the magician had forgotten to take from him. Immediately, an enormous and frightful genie rose out of the earth, saying, What wouldst thou with me? I am the slave of the ring and will obey thee in all things. Aladdin fearlessly replied, Deliver me from this place. Whereupon the earth opened and he found himself outside. As soon as his eyes could bear the light, he went home, but fainted on the threshold. When he came to himself, he told his mother what had passed and showed her the lamp and the fruits he had gathered in the garden, which were in reality precious stones. Then he asked for some food. Alas, child, she said, I have nothing in the house, but I have spun a little cotton and will go sell it. Aladdin bade her keep her cotton. I have nothing in the house, but I have spun a little cotton and will go sell it. Aladdin bade her keep her cotton, for he would sell the lamp instead. As it was very dirty, she began to rub it, that it might fetch a higher price. Instantly, a hideous genie appeared and asked what she would have. She fainted away, but Aladdin, snatching the lamp, said boldly, Fetch me something to eat. The genie returned with a silver bowl, twelve silver plates containing rich meats, two silver cups and two bottles of wine. Aladdin's mother, when she came to herself, said, Whence comes this splendid feast? Ask not, but eat, replied Aladdin. So they sat at breakfast till it was dinner time, and Aladdin told his mother about the lamp. She begged him to sell it and have nothing to do with devils. No, said Aladdin, since chance hath made us aware of its virtues, we will use it, and the ring likewise, which I shall always wear on my finger. When they had eaten all the genie had brought, Aladdin sold one of the silver plates, and so on, until none was left. Then, he then had recourse to the genie, who gave him another set of plates, and thus they lived to stay home. One day, Aladdin heard an order from the Sultan, proclaimed that everyone was to stay at home and close his shutters, while the princess, his daughter, went to and from the bath. Aladdin was seized by a desire to see her face, which was very difficult, as she always went veiled. He hid himself behind the door of the bath and peeped through a chink. The princess left her veil as she went in and looked so beautiful that Aladdin fell in love with her at first sight. He went home so changed that his mother was frightened. He loved the princess so deeply, he could not live without her and meant to ask her in marriage of her father. He told her he loved the princess so deeply, he could not live without her and meant to ask her in marriage of her father. His mother, on hearing this, burst out laughing. But Aladdin at last prevailed upon her to go before the Sultan and carry his request. She fetched a napkin and laid it the magic fruits from the enchanted garden, which sparkled and shone like the most beautiful jewels. She took these with her to please the Sultan and set out trusting in the lamp. The Grand Vizier and the Lords of Council had just gone in as she entered the hall and placed herself in front of the Sultan. He, however, took no notice of her. She went every day for a week and stood in the same place. When the council broke up on the sixth day, the Sultan said to his Vizier, 
I see a certain woman in the audience chamber every day carrying something in a napkin. Call her next time that I may find out what she wants. Next day, at the sign from the vizier, she went up to the foot of the throne and remained kneeling until the sultan said to her, Rise, good woman, and tell me what you want. She hesitated, so the sultan sent away all but the vizier and bade her speak freely, promising to forgive her beforehand for anything she might say. She then told him of her son's violent love for the princess. I prayed him to forget her, she said, but in vain. He threatened to do some desperate deed if I refused to go and ask your majesty for the hand of the princess. Now, I pray you to forgive not me alone, but also my son Aladdin. The Sultan asked her kindly what she had in the napkin, whereupon she unfolded the jewels and presented them. He was thunderstruck and turning to the vizier said, What sayest thou? Ought I not to bestow the princess on one who values her at such a price? The vizier who wanted her for his own son begged the Sultan to withhold her for three months, in the course of which he hoped his son could contrive to make him a richer present. The Sultan granted this and told Aladdin's mother that, though he consented to the marriage, she must not appear before him again for three months. Aladdin waited patiently for nearly three months, but after two had elapsed, 